Man, that would have been so useful when I was in high school. Like, I had to show some little geek that was. I just call people cosines. Like, cosine. What? It's math stuff, dude. What? Um, all right. So hopefully you guys got done up to maybe not quite G yet. What do you guys got for this one here? Yeah, because cosine is the one that, well, cosine took yes. what on top? S. Took the S away from the sine. Sine is the one that's going to have the number, it's going to have a number on top related to this. Cosine is the one that's like, no, nah, no, nah, give me your S sine, it's too bad for you, right? Because again, <laughs> cosine is a Jeff. So what do you get on the bottom? <laughs> S squared plus 49, 11. If it would have been sine, the only difference would have been, the top would have been, uh, what about this guy? This is the nice guy. This is nice. One over S minus. I think it is. Yeah, one six. over S minus six. Cool. And then that's just an example of how the Laplacian is a linear operator. Right? It'll just kind of dance through the whole thing. So what's the Laplacian of this guy? Three factorial over S to the fourth. Good. Three factorial is? Six. Six. Cute. 2 over s squared. You have the 2 just because of the 2, right? Right. 5 over s. I like it. So this constants, it is integration based, so they can just come out of the way, so you can focus on what's really there. It will look the same. 5 over s. Huh? The 5 over s. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Well, <laughs> this, give me a little bit. Come on, that's, that's more linear there. Come on. I gotta make a. Is that five bits? You should reduce that. Down. <laughs> <laughs> How can I make this better? Put, put wings. Put wings on your S. S. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, little little wings on them. Snake. Oh, write the Superman now. Superman. Maybe we'll make a dollar. Make them dollars. Just too bad for everybody. I should do that in physics. It's gross. All right. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> All right, this guy. What about this guy? Same thing, really. Thing, yeah, right? four to it. yeah, it would be four times four factorial. Four factorial is twenty-four. Four times that is ninety-six over s to the fifth. Good. This is sine. So it's the one that's got the number up top, right? Mm -hmm. Minus 10, 10 over S squared plus 5. 25. Plus 6 over S plus 3. Plus 7 over S. 7 over S. Throughout my life, I've made some concessions. Like the T had to get a curved at the bottom, so it didn't look like a plus sign. The 7 had to get that. Line in there, right? I do what I can. And this guy we already talked about, so it's out front. I've got to put one over 36. 36. So then it ends up with exactly what I need inside 6 factorial as to the 7. So this becomes 1 over 36. T to the 6. Sure. And finally, works better. Well, not finally, but what do I have to do to this guy? Does it, it's not a translation, right? Because this hasn't been translated at all. So it, you don't have to do partials. One, because you can't. You can't break up the bottom. We don't want to bring complex into that whole situation. Yes? It's just separate. Yeah. So this becomes inverse plus of 3s over s squared plus 25 minus the inverse of plus of over. I could have taken the two and the three out, but who cares? So then you get. Let's take the three out and the two out. Let's just so we can really see what we're working with here. What's this guy need? He needs some help. Does this guy need some help too? No. No, this guy's cool, right? Actually, he's an asshole, but no. Okay. Right? Because what's this guy going to be? Cosine five t. 
See, cosine is the one that's like, I'm going to be easier. The top's just got to be an S. I don't have to like balance anything out. All right. Anyway, sorry. And then poor little co uh, sine. What's he need up here? Five. Five. There's two fifths. Oh. Why, didn't, why didn't you keep the three S? Why'd you drop the three? Oh, uh, this is the minus two here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Just break them up. Yeah. Inverse Laplacian, thankfully, is also linear. Yes. No, because it just needs an S up top for cosine. Yeah. That's the, and again, that kind of flows with that too. It's like cosine, I want my life to be easier. So you've got, you're the one that has the, oh, no, I need a five. You know. So he needs a five. So two fifths, that will be a five up there. So now that would be sine five T. So this, that would be the result of transforming a differential equation. It becomes an algebraic expression. We solve it, we get to here, and then we inverse Laplace it and get the actual answer to the D. Yes, that's where it's going. That's where we're going. When I apply a Laplace to differential equation, it becomes an algebraic expression or equation, and then I can solve it. It's kind of nifty. All right, last one. Let's see, who got this G one done? Anybody? How does it get broken up? I think it breaks up nice, right? Real quick, on the bottom you get s plus 3, s minus 1, s plus 1, right? If there's one thing you're going to come out of this class with is you're going to know how to group. Or fail. It's one of those two. Um, and then, so, so did we do this already? Do we, do we want to do the whole thing? So we get s squared plus 4s plus 19 equals a over s plus 3. So it will be a, s minus 1, s plus 1, plus b over this. So b over s, b, s plus 3, s plus 1. And c over this, so it picks up the other two. Was it plus 3? Yeah. Okay, hopefully... Well enough, I skipped, oh, this I kind of skipped a step, is that right? I see. A over this, B over this, C over this, so then it becomes that when you multiply both sides by the other, by the denominator. If I let S equal 1, I'll get 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 19 is 24 equals 0, 0, 4 times 2, I get 24 equals 8B. Do you guys remember this little trick? You don't have to do systems of equations, especially when they're all real factors. Oh my God, kicks ass. I don't have to do any freaking systems. Unless you love systems, then you can do it. B is three. If I make S equal to? One. Already did. If I make S equal to? Negative. Negative one. That's zero, that's zero. I get, well here I get one minus four, it's so negative three plus 19 is 16, equals uh, negative 2 times 2, negative 4c, so then c is negative 4. Is that really cool? What's happening? And now, real quick, to be honest, even that's too long for me. I just look at my s squared stuff now. a plus b plus c has to be 1. Do you guys see that? Yeah. a s squared plus b s squared plus c s squared. That's the only s squared stuff. Has to equal 1 s squared. And I already know what B is, and I know what C is, so A equals 1 plus 4 minus 3 equals 2. Okay, so what does that mean I've got then? Besides the headache. Shit, how much time I got? Shit. That's what I have to get to. Derivatives. So this will be, the question was inverse Laplace, right? Mm hmm. Inverse Laplace of, where'd it go? 2 over s plus 3, uh, 3 over s minus 1, minus 4 over s plus 1. I just always do it in order, so then I don't have to set the damn thing up. And then, of course, that just becomes 2 in negative 3t plus 3. You see? Minus 4. You're negative. Doesn't that look like an answer to a DE we had it does. a few chapters of that? Yeah. yeah. It does. All right. So, I desperately have to get derivatives in here now before it's...
the next class. I need to get this in now. You guys got what you want from this? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Look here. Here's the next thing I want you guys. You guys, try this. Go back to the definition and figure out what this is. Don't overthink it. Write it out and then try to do something. I see all of you guys trying to think ahead. I appreciate that. But write the damn thing out. If you're right now like, I'm not trying to think ahead. I have no freaking idea. All right, write the thing out and then see what you can think of. It's really kind of nifty what happens. I know still on some level you flinch a little bit when there's like a variable that's just a variable or a function that's just a general function, but who gives a shit? What do you call it? What are you going to let you equal? Yeah. Because this is the part that I can definitely integrate. Yeah. Right? So du is? T and then dv is f prime of t dt, so then by definition, v is f, t. f of t. Nothing freaky there, no f talk, nothing like that, it's just direct integration. So now I've got uv evaluated from zero to infinity, uh, minus, and there's a negative, so plus integral of v du, so you get e negative s t f of t dt, but what is this? Yeah, so this is, so let's see, we got Laplace of f prime equals, and what happens on this guy? This is interesting. Yeah, and I just sort of totally, I had notes written for tonight and everything, and I just was like, screw the notes. But this will come out of this. Is there anything major here? Oh, no, not really. Okay, there's just one little piece. There's, a, a, um, there's an existence theorem. It's actually, it's uh, sufficient conditions for a Laplacian to exist. And one of the things that's required is for it to be something called of exponential order. Which really means the function has to be able to be... Um, passed by an arbitrary exponential function, e to the ct, right? And actually, m e to the ct. They have some really nice pictures uh, of this idea where, I don't know, somewhere in here. It's probably 7 1. There, uh, page 283. So I, I, like e to the t squared is not of exponential order because there's no function e to this constant times t that will always be greater than this for any value of t. There isn't. So that's not of exponential order. Therefore, I'm not guaranteed that that would have a Laplacian. Right? In fact, that won't have a Laplacian. So this is what's, what's I'm not going to get too deep into the, the weeds here, but sufficient means it might be more than necessary. So for example, is it sufficient to say that n has to be bigger than 3. If n is bigger than 3, then it is positive. Yes, but is it necessary for n to be bigger than 3 for it to be positive? No. no. So sufficient means maybe it's more than needed, but it definitely is the result if you got that. That's what sufficient means. Necessary means this must be true in order for that to happen. Okay, okay. All right, so this idea of, of exponential order is going to kind of explain what the hell to do here because this is f of t, which I don't know what the hell is f of t. So it's assumed that f of t is a function that has a Laplacian. 
And therefore, it's got to be of exponential order, which means that there is some value of S for which that will overcome this, that will overtake whatever this is, if it's of exponential order. Therefore, this limit, if I plug a, let it go to infinity, will be zero. Mm -hmm. Now, what I get when I plug a zero in, this is where things get interesting, F is zero. I like it. So I get F is zero minus, right? Don't make the same mistake I made earlier. It's the second thing, so you got to do minus that. And then what's this stuff over here? We just said that that is Laplacian of F of T. And let me do this. We use this notation, uh, and this should look very familiar, because Laplacian is basically an integral. So we do use this notation. The Laplacian will do what to a function of T? It will transform it into a function of S. I can't use the same letter because it's not the same function. Right? But it looks very much like integrate F and you get big ass F, right? The antiderivative, mm -hmm. remember that from way back when? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is what the Laplacian does to a derivative. And just to really make it a little more directly related to DEs, if this was in this form, this becomes negative Y zero plus S Y S. Because that's normally what we're going to have DEs in terms of is Y prime, Y double prime. I like it. How are we doing so far? I mean, is that just going right back to fundamentals, right? Like mm -hmm. my, what is that class? Atomic physics? Yeah, I was go back to fundamentals. I'm like, all right. Go back to fundamentals. Here's the definition. We attacked it, and we got an expression. Now, right now, we're like, okay. But this looks like I need an initial condition, an uh, IVP. Mm -hmm. So if I have an IVP, this will totally determine what the answer is. Uh, if you look on the back of this sheet, you can see the other ones. If I do this Laplacian to the second derivative, you can imagine that it's going to, the first time I do this, it's going to have F prime. It's going to be based on this times S. And that's why there's an S squared. Do you guys see that? That's why there's an S squared for the second derivative. And that's why there's an S cubed for the third derivative. It's kind of beautiful. It's based on each one from that came before it. So, I have like two minutes. Look at this problem I put on here. Attack both sides with the Laplacian. So Laplacian of... Oops, got it. Notice I gave you some initial conditions. So... What's the Laplacian of y double prime? <coughs> S squared. Just reading it off of here, right? Big S y of S minus S y of zero minus y prime of zero. All right, that's what the Laplacian does to the second derivative. Is that cool? It's on there. And again, you could prove that by just doing this again with double prime in there. Okay. And I continue. Now it's going to be plus 5 times the Laplacian of y prime. What is y, what's it do to y prime? So it's going to be, oh, poor 5. Good choice here. 5 s, big S, y s, minus 5 times y of 0. And then what is, now here's the interesting, what does Laplace do to y? It makes it into big S, y of s. Right? That's what Laplace does to y. It makes it, where did I put that? I didn't. All right, that's good. Plus 4 times big S at y of s. And what's the Laplace going to do to this side? E to the 2t. It'll be 9 over s, over s minus 2. And now it's algebraic. Right, what's nice is they tell you what y is 0 and y prime is 0 is. So I can just replace this real quick with minus, where to go? y of 0 is 7 halves. Minus y prime of zero is four. Y of zero was seven halves again. And now it's really just solve for y of s. If I can solve for y of s, I can attack both sides with the inverse Laplace. I did Laplacian to bring everything from a t to an s. It made it become algebraic. 
solve for ys, and then I can do the inverse Laplace. So let's see, how do I solve this for ys? Ys, no, ys. So I need to get all my stuff with ys in it together. So I just need to move everything else away. Nine over s minus two, minus or plus seven over two. Seven s over two plus four. Oh, what's this? So thirty-five over two, eight over two, forty-three over two. So plus forty-three over two. Right? Is that cool? The constants. And then I can pull a ys out and divide by the shit I don't want. And I, I'll probably stop here because. But, but, I mean, stop on this next step here. So then I get uh, ys equals 9 over s minus 2. I'm just going to write this really gross just because. Hopefully you guys understand you don't have to write it quite this gross. You see how and I get s squared plus 5s plus 4, which should look familiar. That looks kind of familiar. Because you know, the answers is going to be are going to look like what? What form will the answers of this have? We know what kind of DE this is. E to the something, right? And you see, that's kind of like where this is headed with an extra thing here, right? Uh, and so you can, you can kind of, you can factor this. So you can put the factors on each of the bottoms of these. You can do partial to the ones you need to do partial fractions to. You can kind of see how this is going working backwards. And then I do inverse Laplace to those pieces, and they're going to become e to the something, e to the something. Because it's going to break the shit up using partial fractions. All right, shit. At least I got that far. Yeah. And you're all like, you can slow down. You don't have to. You're stressing out, Jeff. <laughs> this is 7 2. Oh, sorry. It is somebody else too, man. Where I put those? Yeah. Perfect. Sure. Anybody else not have two sides? That one I just gave you today. The printer decided to mess with me to assert its dominance over humans. 